In this video, I will highlight a positive feedback system. The main difference between a positive and a negative feedback system is our outcome. In a negative feedback system, we want the controlled condition that was altered to be returned to normal. In a positive feedback system, we want the stimulus to be increased and we want that controlled condition to continue to change. Our best example of this in the human body is childbirth. So our stimulus for childbirth to start is going to be the stretch of the baby's head on the cervix. Our controlled condition is that stretch of the cervix. The cervix is normally not stretched. And so when the baby enters the birth canal and its head pushes on the cervix, special stretch receptors detect that and send a signal to the brain. The brain decides that it's time for the baby to be born and releases a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin is a signal to our effectors, the organs that are gonna make the change. In this case, it's the uterus. So the oxytocin from the brain is gonna cause the uterus muscles to contract. The uterine muscles contracting is gonna push the baby further into the birth, can birth canal and cause an increase of our stimulus. So that contraction of the uterus is gonna push on the baby's head, which is gonna stretch the cervix more and increase this entire loop. This is why during childbirth, contractions get stronger and closer together over time until the baby is born. Once that stretch of the cervix, because of the baby's head being on the cervix, is gone when the baby is born, this feedback loop will stop and everything will slowly return to normal. So again, the main difference in our positive and negative feedback systems is our outcome. If we want the stimulus to be increased, that's a positive feedback loop. If we want our stimulus to stop or our controlled condition to return to normal, that is our negative feedback loop. Our main examples of positive feedback loops in the human body are childbirth, blood clotting, and the allergy response.